Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome to another video on Kotlin Fundamentals and in this video we will talk about data classes. Well, what are data classes? Data classes are basically created for mainly holding the data. You can think of it them as Bean classes in Java, but in Kotlin data classes are something more special. For example, I can create a class called person which holds first name, last name and date of birth or it could be a college with a name, affiliation and date of establishment. Well, all these classes are basically going to hold some data which will be used by the application. So at the end of the day, these objects are basically used to hold the data. Now the question is when you create such classes or objects of such classes, Sometimes you don't want to give explicit implementation of some of the commonly used functionalities like generation of the hash code or two string functionality. To make it simple, Kotlin allows you to just declare a particular class with a keyword called data. As soon as you use this keyword, when you declare a class, you don't have to provide the implementation of hash code and even two string. If you just check the documentation, it pretty much tells you what are the default implementations that you will get when you declare a particular class as data class. If you see here, it basically tells that by default compiler will automatically give you equals and hash code functionality. It will implement the two string then it has component n function corresponds to the properties of their order of declaration and even a copy function. Copy function is basically like a clone with slight modification. We will talk about it a bit later. But to be able to declare a particular class as a data class, the primary constructor needs to have at least one parameter. That is, you cannot have a constructor without any parameters and all the parameters have to be either val or var type and you cannot declare a class which is of type abstract, open or sealed or inner classes as data classes. With these basic rules established, let's try to understand data classes through a demo. So let me declare a class called person here. A person has first name which is of type string and he can also have well last name which is of also of type string. And then I will create val me is equal to person. I will pass first name and last names and then print me. If I run this particular code, just observe what is the output. You will observe that it will print some default output as if displaying a object. But if I declare this as a data class and once again run it, now you are getting uh, some default implementation of first name and last name being printed as a part of the person object. Not only that, it will help you to give the implementation of the hash code as well. So based on whatever the first name and last name that is declared for the object, it will generate some hash code. You need not have to worry about implementing that particular hash code. Well, in case if you don't want any one particular property uh, to be not part of this default implementation, then you can declare that inside the class. Say for example, I can declare val gender and say string is equal to null. You can see that it only prints first name and last name. The gender did not become part of the data class definition that you had given. Even if I had tried to assign a gender value and try to print it again, you will see that still the gender doesn't become part of the default implementation of the data class. And then there is another small advantage of working with the data classes. You can create a copy of a particular object very easily with minor modifications. Say for example, copy of me is equal to say me dot copy and now let me print copy of me it will print one and the same but if you want to change the last name then you can write last name is equal to say kulkarni and then if you print it you get the last name as kulkarni so if you want to create a copy of an object and slightly change it and then assign it to a new object 
you can make it pretty easy for yourself by using the data classes another advantage is it just makes working with destructuring a little bit more easy what do i mean by that is i can just say f name l name is equal to copy of me and then i can print f name l name so first name and last name of this copy object will be assigned to f name and l name and i can basically now print those values as if they were variables so this is called as object destructuring and you will see that it will basically print an equal current so data classes actually do help you to deal with the data transformation related work in a much more easier fashion so that's it about the data classes in kotlin i shall meet you in the next video on another topic in kotlin that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye